Today, we'll be ranking categories of builds. So all the builds that you see on screen at the moment, these are all like the different types of categories. I'm going to take them all and rank them 1 through 15, basing it on a few different things. One, how strong you can get that particular category of build. Uh, number two, how, how much variety you can get with those stats as well. And number three, how viable they can be in different scenarios. So the scenarios meaning different locations throughout the game, if it's strong against certain bosses, and even in PvP. Uh, one thing as well, just because your favorite build ranks lower on my list doesn't mean that it's bad. You can create very strong builds with every single one of these categories. They're just going to have to be ranked accordingly. So just because you see your build at the bottom, it's not because it's bad. It's the way it is. But with that out of the way, let's get started. At number 15, we have quality builds. So meaning split even stats into strength and dexterity. Never has really been useful in Elden Ring. With just how the game's scalings work, it's always better to just go in all into one stat, so having it heavy infused or keen infused is always going to be more beneficial. Unless you're above level 200, and then in that case you're probably better off going quality, but like 99% of the play base is not going to be above level 200. So I just wouldn't even really bother looking at quality. Even some of the unique weapons in the game um, that cannot be infused don't really get the greatest quality scalings either, the ones actually do. You're always just better off leveling up one stat in particular, because it always just ends up being more beneficial in the long run. And with how spells are really powerful in this game, you'd just rather put those stats elsewhere. At number 14, we have hybrid intelligence and arcane builds. And I know what you're thinking. I use Moonvale and Rivers of Blood at the same time. It's really powerful. How is this build not good? First of all, how do you sleep at night? Second of all, that's not really an optimized build. That's just using two broken weapons and then putting them together. That doesn't really do anything. In terms of intelligence and arcane builds, there are no weapons that actually have those pure scalings. There are spells that do have requirements in both intelligence and arcane, although there are only two, and they both kind of suck. So there's really no synergy happening between those two stats whatsoever to really justify going to spec into that stat. I'd rather just literally both intelligence and arcane stats are really good, but you just need to differentiate a bit better. Number 13, we have pure arcane builds. So the arcane stat is really powerful. However, going all in in arcane and not really putting those stats into other different locations, not really the most viable option. Early game is still going to be plenty fine because everything bleeds out really quickly, especially early game. But the reason as to why a pure arcane build isn't going to be that strong is that your total damage isn't going to be that great. Obviously, we're bleeding out enemies really quickly with most arcane builds. But if you go up against an enemy that is immune to bleed or really weak to or really strong against bleed, you're just not going to really have a great time. Because if you go with like a bleed type weapon, the damage itself isn't that great. So you're just better off putting your stats into other areas where you can actually use some other cool arcane weapons themselves that actually have scalings in different type of areas. If you were going to use a pure arcane build, definitely want to utilize an occult weapon that has bleed already on it. So you can actually get the good damage and bleed build up at the same time. But you're very limited with this build. At 12, we have pure decks. So very similar to how why I don't really like arcane. Like early game is going to be completely fine. Um, but you really spec into only one stat where like dex really shines when you pair it with other stats. And not really being able to use spells in this game isn't really the greatest thing either, because spells are just absolutely amazing. One good thing about pure dexterity though is that it actually has a lot of viable options for weapons. So things like a uh, hand of Melina and both the bolt of Grand Sax and the Dragon King Craigblade have really good dexterity scaling, so they could be very viable options, although you're kind of just limited, and I feel like all other um, builds just have something more going for it, although they're still very solid weapons that you can pair with a pure dex build. That's number 11, which is probably like one of the most disappointing builds in Elden Ring, is faith and intelligence builds. The only reason this is this high is purely because the Sword of Night and Flame. If it wasn't for that weapon, this one would be probably last on the list, because it really doesn't get the best of either faith and intelligence. It kind of gets a middle ground in both when you're pretty much better off specking into one or the other. So if you spec all into faith, you can utilize the talismans there, do a load of damage, same thing with intelligence. Whereas if you have both, you're just really going to do middle damage with both spells. But the Sword of Night and Flame is an absolutely amazing weapon. However, it's the only weapon that you can really get with a faith intelligence build. Obviously, you could do something like the uh, Clayman's Harpoon or the... Earth Steel Dagger and just have them infused with the other element, and you could make a build around those as well, but it really, realistically, the Sword of Nine Flames is really your only weapon. 
And the, some of the spells that do have intelligence and faith requirements, they're kind of shit as well. Like the um, fundamentalist incantations, they're just really not that great. But yeah, so the Sword of Nine Flame is really the saving grace for this entire build. At number 10, we have Arcane and Strength. So very similar to how I'm not much of a fan of faith and intelligence. So I really don't like it for the same reasons and being that the only reason you would ever want to use an Arcane and Strength build is purely because of the Mogwin Sacred Spear. It is an absolutely amazing weapon, a really good bleed weapon, but it's like the only Strength Arcane weapon in the game. And it was really good, but same reason as to really I don't like the Faith Intelligence build is that there's not much variety going on there. Nothing really to warrant using that other than that there's one weapon really. At number 9, I have Pure Strength. So Pure Strength builds are absolutely just amazing in terms of how much damage you can do in one hit. Um, the only reason I have it this high is purely because of jumping attacks. So the problem is with slow weapons in this game is that they're incredibly slow, but jumping attacks are come out pretty quickly or roughly have about like the same attack animation speed. So you always just want to be utilizing that. So with a lot of weapons having really high strength scalings in this game, so there's a bunch of weapons that do have an S scaling. So if you just dual wield the giant crushes, heavy infuse, use something like Royal Knight's Resolve, you can be doing a whole bunch of damage at once just by spamming jumping attacks and do a whole bunch of stagger damage on top of that as well. So in terms of total overall damage, pure strength is actually a very viable option. But once again, you're not going to have much variety because you're not really utilizing any spells at all. And spells are just incredibly powerful. So there's that. As number eight, I have intelligence and strength builds. So this one is pretty viable in terms of how many different weapons you can use. However, being that most strength weapons in this game are just going to be not as good as dex weapons because they're very large and slow. Even though I was just talking about using just jumping attacks only, which can be viable. But the options that you do get with it are very nice. So health and staple is a good option. The roller greatsword and star scourge greatsword also all very viable options for a strength intelligence build. I just feel like it's a bit outclassed by some of the other intelligence options of the game, like pure intelligence, intelligence decks. I just feel like they're just better options because you just do more damage with them or just be able to attack quicker. Although I don't think this is a very bad option at all. It's still very viable and solid. I just feel like it's just outclassed. At number seven, we have faith and strength. So very similar to has to why I don't really care much for intelligence strength. It's because strength weapons aren't going to be as good as dex weapons in most cases and being that dex gives you that um, spell casting speed also it just it makes for a better pairing with spells in like 99 percent of the time but the reason i have it higher than intelligence is because i like the faith weapons a little bit better than the intelligence weapons so weapons like malicus black blade the envoys longhorns really good magma blade all very solid weapons i just like them more than the intelligence based ones that's pretty much for like the only reason and obviously you get things like golden valve so it can actually boost your weapon damage by a lot more as well which is really nice if you are using strength based weapons Okay, at number six, we have pure intelligence. So this will do like some of the most craziest damage in the game. If you use pure intelligence, you, the game is going to be pretty easy for you. Only reason as to why I don't have this like in the top three um, is because of the lack of variety you get with pure intelligence. There aren't many weapons that just have very low requirements and just only require an intelligence weapon. Obviously, there are weapons that have low-ish requirements, so something like the Dark Moon Greatsword is still very good. You just need to spec into 16 strength, which isn't that high in like the long run, really. Um, but one another thing that I don't really like about using pure intelligence is that you're only stuck doing magic damage. So if you go up against an enemy that's really strong against like elemental damage or just magic in general, you're going to be really having like a tough time. So just the the lack of variety of pure intelligence is what's keeping me from putting it like in the top three but it does so much damage as it's like a pure caster it's just absolutely insane so that pretty much for that alone it gets number six at number five we have pure faith so for the reasons as to why i don't really like pure intelligence that much it is the reason as to why i like pure faith a lot and that's because of the variety that it gets so with pure intelligence you get stuck pretty much just using magic damage like 99 percent of the time Whereas Faith, you get to utilize lightning spells, holy spells, fire spells, um, even physical spells as well. So you get to do like a bunch of different damage. You get to have status effect spells like Flame Gummy Strength, Golden Vow, and a whole bunch of different healing spells on top of that, which just all make for a nice wide variety. It suits like all different types of play styles. You're not really um, just thrown into you doing just one thing over and over. You get to just do a whole bunch of things with Faith. 
And good thing with Pure Faith as well is that there are dedicated weapons for a Pure Faith build, like the Cypher Pata and the Coded Sword, although they do holy damage and holy damage towards the end of the game isn't going to be really the greatest, so I'd rather just have a different type of weapon, hence why I don't put this any higher in the list, but just the variety that Faith spells in general to get here is as to why it gets higher than Pure Intelligence. At number 4 we have Faith and Dexterity builds. So in this wonderful game, um, spell casting speed is actually tied to the Dexterity stat, which is absolutely amazing because if you have a lot of Dexterity, you're noticing that your spells are going to be coming out a lot quicker, which is absolutely amazing. And the fact that a lot of the Faith Dexterity weapons of this game are really good, I consider them better than the Faith Strength weapons. So you have things like the Sacred Relic Sword, both of the Faith Daggers, uh, the God Slayer's Great Sword, as, wing as well as the Winged Scythe, all very powerful options. Obviously your spells aren't going to be doing as much damage, but you have much more variety with the weapons themselves, and the spells come out quicker. So just all in all, I just feel like it's better than Pure Faith in general. At number 3, we have Dexterity and Arcane. Should be no surprises here. Rivers of Blood, Eleonora's Pole Blade, there's really nothing else I need to mention other than those two weapons to make you understand as to why this gets top 3. Yeah, it's just absolutely insane. Not only are we doing like a decent amount of damage, because obviously you respect into Dexterity, so you're doing good physical damage as well, but the bleed is just absolutely ridiculous with these weapons, they're just absolutely insane. Like, I'm not really sure how much more you want me to say. Yes, if you do up against, go up against enemies that are weak or immune to status effects, I mean strong or immune to status effects, then you're not going to be doing, like, it's not going to be that viable, so which is why it's not going to get number one, because it lacks a little bit of variety, but bleed throughout like 90% of the game is just absolutely insane. And this is just one of the best forms of just doing bleed with these weapons themselves. So yeah, number three. At number two, we have Intelligence and Dexterity builds. And know what you're thinking, I had Faith Strength over In Strength, so why do I have Int Dex over Faith Dex? And that's purely because of the weapons themselves are just absolutely amazing, and how fast those sorceries actually come out with a Dexterity build, especially in PvP, it's just absolutely, like, amazing. So in PvP, they pretty much just run rampant with how quickly you can do those spell combos and how fast they do come out. It's actually insane. And then the weapons, like Moonville Katana exists, so there's that. But they don't, just to get that, they get Wing of Astil as well, as well as the Death's Poker, which are just all amazing intelligence dexterity weapons. So due to all of that combined, so obviously we mentioned earlier with the spell casting speed tied to dexterity, you're just doing an enormous amount of damage all at once and just have probably three of the best weapons in the game. Obviously, you're going to have that magic um, lack of variety because you don't really have other elements, but that's perfectly fine. It doesn't really matter. You're just doing an enormous amount of damage anyway. And magic isn't as bad as holy damage in the long run, but I still prefer faith to have a lot of different other elements for its incantations as well. Number one, faith and arcane. Shouldn't be a surprise to anybody, but it probably is going to be to some. But these, these builds, honestly, are just absolutely insane. In all phases of the game, it's just going to dominate. If I was going to spec into a Faith and Arcane build, I'd probably have about 30 Faith and just put the rest into Arcane. Reason being is that the Dragon Communion still exists and that gets an S scaling into Arcane. So the fact you can do a lot of damage with your incantations without actually having much Faith is actually insane. And if you have about 30 Faith, that's just enough to, one, use like all the Dragon spells. Um, You can use spells like Lightning Spear, Catch Flame, uh, Burner Flame, which are all like really amazing spells. And you were doing just as much damage as if you had like a pure faith build. So you, first of all, you have like some of the best incantations of the game. Then you get dragon spells themselves, which are actually insane. You can literally use one to proc cold, one to proc scarlet rot, which is ridiculous. If you want to do regular fire damage as well, all of which are just absolutely amazing. Obviously the dragon communion seal, boost dragil, dragon incantations also. And you're using an arcane build, so you can literally utilize bleed on top of all of that. And yeah, so bleed is already stupid combined with the rest of this stuff, it just, it makes for an absolute joke of a build, and it trivializes any game. And um, one thing I probably wouldn't use is, like, healing spells. Health regen spells are fine, but, because obviously healing um ties directly to faith, that's, like, the one downside, I think. But, yeah, but you can still use health regen spells. Obviously, you can still use flame growing strength and golden vow on top of all of that. Yeah, it just, you're not going to be lacking damage at all. Because any single weapon is going to be doing good damage with Golden Veil, doesn't matter what it is. But yeah, that covers all of the builds though. Um, let me know what your guys' top 5 are, I would like to see those in the comments. And yeah, as always, please like and subscribe if you did appreciate this. And yeah, see you in the next one guys, peace.